another country Yes, it must have been another land That couldn't happen in the USA We'd never treat a man that way Oh, I know we'd never treat a man that way Your orders are to stop Marconi. Marconi must not reach his destination. Do you understand? Don't screw this up! My name is Michael Marconi. Everyone calls me Marconi. What I'm about to share with you will expose a high-level New World Order secret government that operates in the shadows that most Americans are not even aware of. It is an organization that honors no borders and operates throughout the world. This secret organization conducts illegal surveillance operations against unsuspecting citizens like you and me. This is where my story begins. A woman kisses Michael Marconi goodbye, then gets back in her car and waves as she drives away. Michael Marconi enters the front door of the Greyhound bus terminal. He approaches a counter carrying two suitcases, wearing a blue backpack. Michael McCroney, age 55, with olive complexion, with medium brown hair, with a touch of gray, places his suitcases at his feet next to the counter and waits for the ticket agent to acknowledge him. The ticket agent is an older woman, age 50, with short brown hair, with glasses, wearing a Greyhound uniform, politely smiles at Michael McCroney before she asks, How may I help you this morning? Michael then answers, I'd like to purchase a one-way ticket to the Port Authority Terminal in New York City. Okay, when do you want to leave? I just got word that my mother and brother are both in the hospital. I'd like to leave this morning. The next bus will be arriving in half an hour. It'll be here in Olympia at 9 a.m. The one-way fare to New York City is $239 plus an additional $5 extra for each piece of luggage. That'll be fine. I have two suitcases I like to have put under the coach. That will be a total of $249. Marconi goes into his wallet and pays the money to the ticket attendant. Marconi then asks, when will I be arriving in New York City? You'll be arriving in New York on Thursday, December 4th at 1 p.m. the afternoon. You'll be stopping in Portland, Salt Lake City, Denver, Chicago, Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia. Thursday afternoon? Okay. Ticket agent now asked, What is your name, sir? The name is Marconi, Anthony. The ticket agent hands Michael Marconi the Greyhound packet containing tickets and identification tags for his luggage. Thanks. The ticket agent answers, You're welcome. Michael Marconi puts his Greyhound ticket packet in his inside coat pocket he then picks up his bags and walks over to an empty seat where he sits down and then attaches the identification tags to his luggage. Two young men in their late twenties approach the counter. The ticket agent asks the men where they're going. The taller man named John Flynn with blonde hair sporting an Anaheim Angels baseball cap wearing a long beige trench coat turns and looks back at Michael Marconi before speaking. I'd like to purchase two one-way tickets to New York City. The ticket agent then answers, the next bus will be arriving in 10 minutes. The man with the baseball cap goes into his wallet and counts the money before handing it to the ticket agent. The ticket agent now asks, what is your name, sir? The man in the cap turns and looks again at Michael McConey before answering. My name is John Flynn. My brother's name is Greg Flynn. The ticket agent now asks, do you have any luggage to go under the coach, Mr. Flynn? No. All I have is a carry-on bag. The ticket agent now walks out from behind the counter as the bus pulls into the terminal. The ticket agent can now be heard shouting, The bus heading south for Portland, Oregon is here. Because there's only a limited amount of seating, I will call out the names of the passengers who will be boarding this bus. Wilson, Saunders, Anthony, Marcus, and Flynn Make a line right here in front of me. 
Michael Marconi picks up his luggage and stands in line. He notices John Flynn and his brother at the back of the line, staring at them with a confused look on their faces. The ticket agent then adds, Please place your bag next to the bus and the driver will put it under the coach. All of the passengers now exit the terminal and the bus driver checks each passenger's ticket. Michael Marconi places his luggage next to the bus. John Flynn leans over, checking the tag on Michael Marconi's bags. Marconi observes John Flynn checking out his bags. The bus driver allows the passengers to board. Marconi sits in the front seat next to the bus driver and looks back at the men as they board the bus and head towards the rear of the bus. The bus driver, a black man aged 60 with glasses, removes a black suitcase from the seat next to Marconi and places it in the overhead compartment. I'm going to put my things in the overhead. The front seat is usually reserved for the driver. Marconi answers, thank you. The bus driver waits until everyone is seated before he departs the Olympia Greyhound bus terminal. Michael Marconi puts on his glasses and takes out a book to read. The Greyhound bus heads south on Interstate 5. And about 20 minutes later, the bus stops in Centralia, Washington. The bus driver picks up a young female passenger. The passenger places her bag in the overhead and sits next to Marconi. Bus driver pulls away from the Centralia station and he heads south on Interstate 5 towards Portland. The loudspeaker is now turned on by the bus driver. I have to make a quick stop. Please do not leave the bus. The Greyhound bus pulls off at the Tenant Washington exit. The bus driver exits the bus and enters the Greyhound station. Within a matter of seconds, the driver returns and starts the bus. As the driver prepares to pull away, Marconi notices a white man running towards the bus. Marconi alerts the driver to the passenger. Excuse me, driver, there's a man trying to catch the bus. The bus driver opens the door for the man to enter the bus. The sportsman, age 40, with brown hair wearing a fishing hat, and wearing a loose-fitting shirt with baggy pants, out of breath, asked the driver a question. I is this bus going to Portland, Oregon? The man now observes the passengers as he talks to the driver. The bus driver now answers, This bus is full. You'll have to wait for the next bus. W what time is the next bus? The bus driver answers, the next bus will be arriving at 9 p.m. The bus driver now closes the door of the bus. The man is seen talking with two men in front of the station. Michael McConey observes the three men through the bus window. The bus driver shakes his head as he prepares to start the bus. I just told that guy in the station that this bus was full. I think he wanted to see who was on the bus, McConey answered. There was something weird about that guy. He did look a little weird in that strange hat, didn't he, answered Marconi. That guy was one of the weirdest passengers who ever tried to get on my bus. As the bus pulled away, I took one last look at the mysterious stranger. I recognized him immediately. He was the same man who I had encountered five months earlier in a sub shop in downtown Olympia, Washington, which nearly cost me my life. I swore I would never forget his face. The two men who were following me weren't sure of my true identity. They were confused when I answered to the name Anthony. That would explain why one of the men walked over and checked the name tag on my luggage. Luckily for me, the last available seat next to me on the bus was taken by a girl at the previous stop in Centralia, Washington. Greyhound bus the following morning. As I wiped the sleep from my eyes, I took a look at my watch. It was 6 a.m. Pacific time. The bus had driven through the state of Oregon and Idaho during the night. We had changed buses in Portland. I took a seat near the rear of the bus so I could keep an eye on the Flynn brothers. I then looked out of the passenger window and observed the black helicopter following the bus. I had been followed by helicopters for the past six months. My mind flashed back to the first time that I observed a helicopter shadowing me. 
Brooklyn, New York, six months earlier. Michael Marconi is walking down Flushing Avenue when he observes a black helicopter flying overhead. The black helicopter follows Marconi for three city blocks. Michael Marconi's thoughts are interrupted when the loudspeaker on the bus is turned on for the driver to make an announcement. We will be arriving in Salt Lake City. There will be a 30-minute layover here. Please use the reboarding pass to get back on the bus. Marconi now takes a look out the window and watches as the bus moves down Interstate 80 heading east and watches as cars move alongside of the bus towards the city limits of Salt Lake City. Just at that moment he looks up and notices a black helicopter flying alongside of the bus. The Greyhound bus now exits the interstate and heads towards the terminal.